Ever wondered how to analyze trusses? There are two methods to analyze determinate trusses, method of sections and method of joints. Determinate trusses are the ones which can be solved using equilibrium equations. And there are three equilibrium equations, summation of vertical forces equal to zero, summation of horizontal forces equal to zero, and summation of moment equal to zero. In this lecture, I will solve a practical example using method of joints for determinate trusses. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy, and examine life. For this stress, we have to work out the magnitude of member forces and their nature, tensile, compressive, or unloaded. Normally for this kind of truss, when you have two pin supports, a pin support has two reactions here and two reactions here. Remember that when you have a round here, it is a kind of pin support. It's not fixed. Fixed support is denoted like this. There are four unknowns and three equilibrium equations. I mean, normally you would say that this is indeterminate structure. It means that it cannot be solved using equilibrium equations. But here, because the vertical reaction is going to be zero, the reason is that the only member connected with this support is horizontal member. So there is no vertical member or vertical force applied here. This means reaction is going to be zero. And you will see in a minute that why reaction is zero. What we are aiming to find here is these forces, tensile or compressive. So the first thing you want to do is to put these arrows down and these arrows are pointing away from the joint. When arrows are pointing away from the joint, it means the members are in tension. So tension is positive. Our initial assumption is that everything is in tension. Tension is positive and arrows are pointing away from the joints. And later, when we will see if we get a negative value, like in this case over here, then this member is in compression. There are two forces, external forces applied here, 20 kN, 40 kN, and this is 4 meter, 4 meter, and 3 meters. The reactions are denoted by VA and HA, HE and VE. Using Pythagoras theorem, I will find this angle, alpha hypotenuse is equal to under root of adjacent square, which is 3, plus opposite square, which is 4. From here, we get value of hypotenuse as 5. And this will give us value of sine and cos theta. Summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. Summation of vertical forces equal to zero. Remember that this is a truss. In truss, there aren't going to be any moments and there will not be any uh, rotations. And the sign convention is that vertical upwards is positive and horizontal rightwards is positive. Using method of joints, we will isolate each joint and we will find out the summation of forces. First thing that we will need is sine alpha and cos alpha, where sine alpha is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. If you look here, opposite of this angle is 4 and hypotenuse is 5. So 4 over 5 cos alpha is equal to adjacent, which is 3, divided by hypotenuse, which is 5. And I will be using these angles quite frequently here. So let's start with joint C first. Assume all members are in tension. Tension is positive. Arrows pointing away from the joints indicate the tension. And joint C, if you focus on joint C, it has got one vertical force applied, which is 40 kN, a horizontal force applied, which is CD, and inclined force applied, which is BC. This inclined force will be divided into vertical and horizontal components. So these forces, at joint C are shown over here. FBC, which is inclined, FCD, which is horizontal, and 40 kN, which is a downward force. First, let's say summation of vertical forces equal to zero. There are two vertical forces, one which is pointing down 40 kN, as downward forces are negative, so that's why I have placed a negative sign over here. And FBC sine alpha, a vertical component of this one, which is acting upwards. So that's the reason it is positive. And FBC sine alpha is 4 over 5, which I found out a little earlier. And I bring this 40 on other side of the equation. And when I have 40 over here, 
simply I will multiply and divide both sides by 5 over 4 to get rid of this 4 over 5. In that way, I have FBC as 50 kilonewton and it is positive. Positive means that it is in tension. Then I will say summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. One horizontal force is FCD, other horizontal force is horizontal component of FBC. As both forces are pointing towards left, so that's why I've taken them as negative. So FCD minus FCD minus FBC cos alpha is equal to zero. I multiply both sides by negative sign so that I can get rid of negative sign. Negative multiplied by zero is zero. And here I get plus FCD and FBC and I put value of cos alpha, which I found out a little earlier, adjacent over hypotenuse. And from here, I put value of FBC, which was found out a little earlier over here. And when you put all these values, then you get value of FCD. I bring whatever I have on the right side of the equation and that makes it negative. Negative sign indicates that it is compression. Once I have these values, I will write down these values on the diagram. So I have negative 30, it means it is compression and I have positive 50, it means it is in tension. Now I will move to a joint where I have at least two or less than two unknowns. At joint B, I have FBC as known and FBD and BA is not known yet. Although the values are written over here, but it is not known yet. Let us find out what happens at joint B. At joint B, I have inclined member FBC, I have a vertical member FBD and I have horizontal member FAB. This inclined member will have two components. At joint C, I have FBA, FBD and I have FBC. And FBC is known, which I found out little earlier from here. Value of FBC is 50 kilonewton. Uh, first, I will say summation of vertical forces equal to zero. And when I say summation of vertical forces equal to zero, I have FBD downwards, which is negative, and I have a vertical component of FBC, which is minus FBC sine alpha. And from here, I put value of FBC and I bring these values on other side of equation, I get minus 40 kilonewton. And negative indicates compression. And then I will say summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. There are two horizontal forces. One is FBA, which is pointing leftwards. That's why it is negative. Other is FBC cos alpha, which is pointing towards right. When it's pointing towards right, then I will say it is a positive. I input value of FBC and cos alpha. When you put these values and if you bring FBA on the other side of equation, it becomes positive. And from here, I get value as 30 kilonewton. As the value is positive, this means that it is in tension. So then simply you write value of FBD, which is minus 40 and FAB, which is 30. These two values are found out a little earlier during our calculations. So we found out these two values from here. And then I will have a look at which joint to move. And here I will move to joint D now because I have two forces which are known and I have two forces AD and DE which are unknown and I have one vertical force applied. Don't forget to apply this vertical load. Normally, people will miss this loading. When you move to joint D, you have this configuration. You have force FCD, which is negative, and you have force FBD, which is negative as well. You have force FAD, which is inclined, and you have force FDE, which is leftwards, and you have downward force. 20 kilonewton. That is the external force. First, we will say summation of vertical forces equal to zero. Now, there's a lot happening over here. You have to be very careful when you sum up the forces and be careful about the direction of the forces. So first, vertical force FBD. FBD is vertical. That's the reason it is positive. FAD sine alpha. That is the vertical component of FAD as it is pointing upwards. So vertical force will be upwards. That's the reason it is positive. And I have a downward force of 20 kilonewton because it is downwards. That's the reason it is negative. And we equate everything to zero because we say summation of vertical force is equal to zero. Putting value of FBD, which is minus 40, and 
FAD sine alpha is 4 over 5, negative 20. So 20 and 40 will make 60. I bring it on the other side of the equation. It becomes 60. And here I'm left with FAD 4 over 5. I multiply both sides by 5 over 4. I can add, subtract, multiply, or divide both sides with a number so that I can get rid of some components. Multiplying both sides by 5 over 4, I get value of FAD as 75 kN. This is value of this force. Then I will say summation of horizontal forces equal to 0. Now, horizontal forces are, I have FDE, which is leftwards. That's the reason it is negative. I have FCD, which is rightwards. That's the reason it is positive. And I have FAD cos alpha. The component of this force will point towards left. That's the reason it is negative. FAD cos alpha, negative. I will put value of FCD, which is minus 30. And I will put value of FAD, which is 75. Once you have placed all the values and cos alpha, it will give me minus 30 and minus 45. I, I'll bring these values on the other side of equation. This becomes negative 75 kilonewton. Negative means it is compression. Once I have these values, FAD as 75 and FDE or ED is uh, 75, then I will go to joint A and E to find out the reactions. Remember that we cannot find out reactions directly over here because there are four unknowns and three equilibrium equations. So it's better to start at a joint where some forces are known and slowly move towards the supports. So I will move to joint A. At joint A, I have FAB, I have FAD. These two forces are known. And then I have these reactions, HA and VA. And we will see that what's the value of these reactions. If the value of the reactions come out to be negative, it means that the direction which I have assumed for these reactions should be other way around. Joint A, as I showed you earlier, it is FAB on right side, FAD is inclined, VA is vertical force and HA is horizontal reaction. Summation of vertical forces equal to zero, first of all. So what vertical forces are acting here? First is the reaction, it is acting upwards, that's the reason it is positive, and then FAD, the vertical component of this force, will act downwards. Downward forces are negative. That's the reason I have FAD sine alpha. If you put value of FAD and value of sine alpha, which is 4 over 5, you will get 60. And if you bring this on the other side of the equation, you will get positive 60 kN. So this means that the assumed direction of VA is fine. I don't need to change its direction. Second is summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. HA is acting towards left, negative. FAB is acting towards right. That's why it's positive. FAD, the horizontal component, is acting towards right. So FAD cos alpha. I will put value of FAB, which is 30. FAD, which is 75. And then I multiply with cos alpha, which is 3 over 5. From here, I get value of HA as 75 kN. This means that my assumed direction of HA is fine. So HA is 75, VA is 60. Simply, you will write these values. VA is 60 kN and HA is 75. And then I will move to joint E. At joint E, as you would see that I just have horizontal members connected, there is no vertical member connected. So that's the reason it will have zero vertical force. At joint E, I have horizontal force HE rightwards and I have horizontal force FDE rightwards and I have vertical force FVE upwards. Summation of vertical forces equal to zero as only one reaction is acting upwards. There is no vertical member or inclined member connected to the joint. It means vertical reaction is going to be zero. And then summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. Both these forces, HE and FDE, they are acting in rightward direction. Now you would say that it's a negative value. Why didn't we change the direction of arrows? It is always better to keep the direction of the arrows same initially because we assume that every member is in tension and we will not change the directions now. But when we will have a final solution, then we'll reverse the direction of arrows where we have negative value. And this will give us the full picture of the analysis. Now here, HE becomes 75 kN. Now we have to verify that summation of all vertical forces, summation of all horizontal forces 
is equal to zero all external ones and reactions so fx i will have ha horizontal reaction at a which was leftwards so that's the reason it is negative and he which was rightwards here that's the reason it is positive both have negative and positive values both cancel each other it means it is fine va plus ve va is 60 kN upwards ve is zero and then i have two downward forces 20 and 60 if i add it up it becomes zero so this means that the system is in equilibrium now i will put all the values in truss so when you place all the values you will get this situation member bc it's 50 kN as the value is positive so that's why it is in tension member dc its value is 30 kN because it was negative earlier so we have reversed the direction of arrows now the arrows are now pointing towards the joint now you would argue that for a member's perspective it looks like that arrows are pointing away from the joint it, it looks like it is compressing it but actually what you do is that you put a cross section and then you draw the free body diagram so here for joint c free body diagram indicates that this member arrow is pointing away that is tension and the member which is pointing inwards that is compression so think about the joints rather than the member so if you hold this box like this and if you pull it the arrows are pointing away from the joint and if you try to push it or squash it now arrows are pointing inwards so think about the joints at bd we have 40 kN and this is compression so that's why the arrows have been reversed now they are pointing towards the joint ab remains the same it is tension so arrows are pointing away from the joint ad it is positive so arrows are pointing away from the joint and de or ed it is negative so that's why arrows are pointing towards the joint Remember that now we have removed the negative and then we have simply reversed the direction of arrows where it was coming out to be negative. HA is 75 leftwards and VA is 60 upwards. HE is 75 rightwards and VE is zero. And these are the external forces applied. So compressive members are DE, CD and BD. Tensile members are AB, BC and AD. Compressive members are usually termed as struts and tensile members are normally termed as ties. You might have heard about strut and tie a model to analyze different structures. So this is where this terminology comes from. So struts are compression members, tensile members are ties.